Good day everybody, my name is George, I am from FXCM South Africa and um, today we're just going to be discussing fundamental analysis, um, what is it and why is it important. Um, so let's just jump in quickly. Um, obviously we have information uh, about FXCM and you can reach us on the following channels, uh, Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Um, and I have my email address here at the bottom as well, gmladenoff at fxcm.za.com. Uh, if you would like to send me an email uh, after this presentation or if you have any questions. Let's just jump straight into the disclaimer quickly. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Examples are displayed for illustrative purposes only and do not guarantee profits. Trading on margin can result in losses that may exceed your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks or seek investment advice if necessary. FXCM provides an execution-only service. Any analysis, opinion, commentary or research-based material contained in this presentation is for information and educational purposes only and it is not intended to be an offer, recommendation or solicitation to buy or sell. Leverage is a double-edged sword and can dramatically amplify your profits. You can also just as dramatically amplify your losses. Trading foreign exchange with any level of leverage may not be suitable for all investors. Okay. The webinar does not have regard to specific investment objectives, financial situations and needs of any specific person who may receive it. All videos are provided for educational purposes only and clients should not rely on the content or policies as they may differ with regards to the entity that you are trading with. Further, any opinions, analysis, prices or other information contained on this website is provided for educational purposes and does not constitute investment advice. FXM will not accept liability for any loss or damage including without limitation to any loss of profit which may arise directly or indirectly from use of or reliance on such information. Okay. So, how did Forex start? Okay, and this is important to understand, um, obviously, because this will give you an idea of why fundamental analysis is so important. Okay, so it all first started off with the central banks and commercial banks. Um, reserves are used for international transactions. So what they initially would do is they would hold or house different currencies so they can mitigate currency risk and so they can optimize their, their trading. Um, obviously, we'll go into the role of a central bank and how they, how they play a role in the Forex uh, market. Um, very closely related there, um, but yes, everything started with the central banks as they are the predominant players in terms of currencies, um, especially for the countries that they relate to and trade relations that they have with other countries. After which this was adopted by large corporations, so Forex in general, taking advantage of price movements and um, you know, also mitigating currency risk, obviously because a lot of major corporations have international business, so they deal on an international scale. So obviously this will have an impact on currency risk as well. So they, they saw this as an opportunity to mitigate that as well um, and to obviously take advantage of price changes as we retailers do as well. Um, and then obviously lastly, um, it was made available to the retail market. So this is individuals who look to make money off price fluctuations and to better their financial position. Okay, So it all started with central banks and commercial banks um, purely on an operational point of, of view um, after which it was taken up by large corporations and wealthy investors again uh, with a similar goal in mind but obviously took it further and wanted to make money off it um, as, a, as a financial instrument and then obviously the retail sector which is individuals like 
everyone like you and myself. Um, so, so that's just how it started. Um, it's good to have an understanding of where it began uh, because as, as the presentation progresses, you'll see why it's so important uh, to understand where it starts and um, what to analyze. Okay. So what is fundamental analysis? It's the analysis of financial news events. So anything that happens in terms of finance that you'll see on the news, um, interest rate changes, um, jobs data, uh, jobs releases, information, um, you know, anything that has anything to do with the financial markets, regardless of whether it's Forex, um, whether it's companies themselves, stocks, indices, um, major, how can I say, major impacts that uh, play a role in, you know, the grand scheme of things in the geopolitical sphere. Okay, so now analysis of market moving events such as economic data points, like we said, GDP, employment indicators, um, non-farm payroll, uh, and, and, and such information, all of this is considered to be fundamental analysis. So economic data points are quite important because they actually influence what the central bank is thinking and again we'll get into you know the central bank's role and um, you know how to approach uh, the information that they give out. But for example, if the central bank is hiking, hiking rates but data coming out of it of recent uh, coming out recently, um, whatever the case may be for, for, for whatever data points, but if the information is coming out and it's poor, this could actually change the central bank's decision uh, after a certain point, and then the market will probably th will start to think, you know, what's going to happen next? Um, and the trend will either change, strengthen, or, you know, flatline a bit based on the central bank's decision after such an economic data point comes out. Um, this is just a, a quick example of economic data points and how they play into the whole uh, fundamental analysis um, sphere. So another, another important thing about fundamental analysis, like I said, is the analysis of central banks and their decisions. And um, the, this is now getting into why, they are, why central banks are so important. And um, as you can see, first of all, it started off with them, Forex started off with them, um, and fundamental analysis is actually analyzing their decisions. So as we go along, you'll see that the, the central banks uh, become more and more of a key um, player in, in the fundamental analysis. Okay, um, as well as analysis of geopolitical events, um, for example, G20, um, this was a summit for central banks and politicians. Uh, as many of you know, Brexit's going on at the moment, so this is also a geopolitical event that drastically uh, affects um, f forex prices, uh, namely the, 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 the pound and the dollar. Um, this is where you can see most of the, you know, the impacts. Trump being a very controversial figure as well. Um, being a very um, vocal as well. So all these major events, uh, obviously now also with the whole North Korea situation, this is also considered to be a geopolitical event. All of this, as we've, even the previous um, points, all of these points are what make up fundamental analysis. It's pretty much understanding what is going on in the world today um, and how this could possibly affect the Forex market. Um, for me personally, this fundamentals is what drives, predominantly what drives, um, you know, prices. Obviously, traders and, um, you know, corporations that do trading, um, they obviously also play a role uh, in how the prices move and liquidity, etc. But for me, countries, economies, and such major events are very important to understanding, you know, the financial health of the um, of the economy, and thus 
the strength of the currency that it's related to, as well as its future prospects and its past, um, you know, struggles or whatever the case may be, just its past information. So that's also very important. Okay, so, so that's pretty much what fundamental analysis is. Um, and now we can we can carry on into why they are so important. Okay, uh, why it is so important. Sorry. Okay, one needs to understand that markets and what drives the decisions behind traders and currency fluctuations are. Okay, so like I said, for me, the major if things that affect the forex markets is exactly fundamental analysis, and that's why it's so important. Uh, you don't want to just go in blindly um, when you're trading just because you see that there's an uptrend uh, without actually knowing why there was an uptrend in the past um, and what will happen in the future after a certain event occurs. Um, so this is very important. You could uh, find yourself doing technical analysis and actually you know, having strong signals from there uh, but if you are blind to what's happening fundamentally behind, you know, the central bank's decisions or a policy change or whatever the case may be, um, and that can actually nullify your technical analysis. Um, for example, if you've used three indicators, for example, such as um, uh, Fibonacci, pivot points, and, you know, you've added your own levels of support and resistance, everything could be pointing to a buy, uh, a buy signal, uh, but then you might find out, or you might not even know if you're not, un if you're not on the fundamental analysis train that, <clears throat> you know, something might happen with the central bank and they might make a, a statement and at that point you will see a major drop, a major spike, downward spike. Um, negative spike against the currency that you that you thought was a good idea to buy um, and without tracking the fundamentals uh, you would be blind to this and unfortunately you would lose a decent amount of money obviously relative to the amount that you are trading with but the key point is that with fundamental analysis you get the big picture scenario okay uh, geopolitical events and central banks' policies heavily influence the financial picture of a country, so analyzing them gives us a, a sense of direction. Um, it's pretty much touching on what we just mentioned uh, previously, just strengthening the argument, and this is exactly the case. Um, you don't want to be not knowing what's going on in the world. Um, but betting money on the fact that you do. <laughs> um, so that's also very important. Economic data points, uh, economic statistics tell us more about the sustainability of a given economy and they give us a picture of what the health of that ecosystem looks like. Exactly like we said before, it tells us what has happened in the economy up until this point, up until now, um, why that trend looks the way it does is because of certain events. Um, how the trend will continue, uh, regardless of whether it goes up or down or it flatlines, it does not matter. It'll still give us these economic data points and statistics, etc., will still give us an idea of how healthy the economy was up until this point, and based on the certain events that occur uh, in the future. Um, we will we will be updated in terms of understanding what is going on um, with the economic picture of that country or you know the the, the economy. Okay. So based on the above, we have a good picture of what is happening. So when changes occur, we will know how this will affect the current trend. It could change, neutralize, or become greater. Yeah. So it's just summarizing what I just said. Um, so yeah, this is why the, the fundamental analysis is so important because it gives you because it gives you the the big picture, um, you know, big picture situation of what's going on or what has been going on, what's going on at this point in time, and what could possibly be happening in the future. Fundamental analysis is based on sentiment. Okay, everything is about sentiment. It's about how the market feels about an event 
a currency, um, a security. It's not so much like how, I'm just going to give an example with stocks, for example. If you are analyzing the health of a, of a company, you want to understand its financials. You want to understand what's going on um, and see you know, where they're spending money, their returns, etc., etc. It's the same thing with Forex. You want to understand what's going on fundamentally. Um, hence the word fundamentals. So yeah. Okay. Now, what are the central bank's jobs? Okay. Now we're going into, you know, how Forex started and why it started with them and why they play such a major role in fundamental analysis. The central bank's job is to keep the, uh, the country's economy on a straight, stable path, to prevent erratic movements in its stability, and to prevent the banking system from failing. They look to provide solidity in the economy. Okay, so that's their main job. Their, they, their main focus is to keep the economy stable. Okay, the central bank is an independent regulatory figure of a country's money supply, which is governed by a central bank's monetary policy, which means that they have full autonomy in the decisions that they make um, regarding the economy and certain policies that they implement in order to be able to keep the economy stable. Um, and it's 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 pretty much the, it's their primary goal. Is the central banks is to provide their country's currency with price stability, uh, you know, by controlling inflation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So changing in policies have different implications on the currency itself. So if a central bank decides to decrease its interest rates, for example, um, this is a bad sign. To give you an idea, what does decreasing interest rates mean? It means that the cost of borrowing is becoming cheaper. So if you had to go to the bank, when you borrow money for your house, your repayment interest rates will be less. Okay, you, We see it as a good thing because we don't pay as much, um, you know, back to the bank for getting this loan. But from the bank's perspective, the central bank's perspective, this is a bad sign because um, what they are trying to do is they are trying to um, get people to take out loans to start businesses to, you know, to spark back the economy. Any, econ any economy that needs sparking up has gone through trouble. Um, and that's why this is a bad sign. So it's pretty much trying to re-spark the economy and thus it's a negative sentiment for that economy because it needs help. And the help is the decrease in interest rates uh, because borrowing becomes cheaper and thus people borrow more and thus creating more action in the economy. Economy starts to heat up um, and things start to go get better and so on and so forth. So decreasing interest rates usually a bad sign for because it's the economy hasn't been doing so well. So it's usually um, you know related to negative sentiment. However, with forex and fundamentals and just anything in general, it's never just so cut and dry. Um, you have to do a little bit more digging. It's, there's no one size fits all, um, but it's a good. It's as long as you understand that and um, you do a little bit more research into it. When a certain um, when a central bank issues a certain release, um, is you'll you'll be able to understand what's going on there. On the other hand, if an econo if a if a central bank is increasing interest rates, this is because the economy is very hot um, and the central bank needs to actually control it. It doesn't want the economy to spiral out of control and that's why it has to make you know, the, the cost of borrowing a little bit more expensive so that not everyone can you know, just go take out um, loans as they please and, um, and thus you know, create even more heat in the economy. Um, but like I said, uh, do more digging once you see a release and as to why it's ha that, that release has occurred um, and what is the sentiment actually behind that release. Okay, um, so yeah, that, that's, that's the, the, the core functions of the central bank is to provide stability, predictability, and to prevent the whole system from falling apart. 
Okay. How to approach. Okay. Decide on which currencies to trade. Doesn't have to be euro, dollar, or pound, dollar. Um, just anything that the news is discussing um, or anything that is of interest to you. Uh, but with these two currency pairs, there's a lot of information uh, because obviously they're the most traded currencies in the world. Um, very volatile. Uh, however, what I like to do is I like to just see when central banks are releasing um, certain data and I will understand try to understand what the trend is of that currency related to that central bank has been up until this point and see what the different options are and what the possible outcomes are. So if the central bank decides to increase interest rates, how will that affect the current trend based on what's been happening until now? Um, if the bank decides to decrease interest rates, again, um, why is it doing so? What effect will it have in the future based on what has been happening in the past? Um, it's all about sentiment and expectancy. So if the, con if, if the market has expected the increase in interest rates, for example, this may already be reflected in the current trend. Um, so the trend might not change based on the release. Um, it might actually rally into that trend. The, re the, the data release from the central bank might rally into that trend. Um, so that's why it's important to know what has happened previously. Um, if the sentiment of what is happening now has been taken into account, um, and how will that affect the future? Um, the reason why I'm speaking so hypothetically is because, like I said before, it's not so cut and dry. It's not just if it increases interest rate, this is bad. Um, you have to take into consideration what has been happening until now, why it's been happening until now, when something happens at this point or in the future, has the market expected that and has it already taken it into account or is it a shock um, to the market? Um, in which case, if it is a shock, you can almost be sure that the trend will either magnify drastically um, or change drastically. Um, if the market has already expected the, in the, int uh, the interest rates to increase and then the bank does that do that, then you might not see as much fluctuation. Okay. Uh, the second thing is to understand the most influential reasons as to why the currency has been moving in a given direction then wait for something to change the market view or magnify it. Um, it's pretty much what we just said, uh, but just to give you an idea, like the UK snap elections after the Brexit announcement. So what happened initially, there was an announcement of Brexit, and what happened was that um, Theresa May called for a snap election because she thought that if she would win the election, she would have more backing behind her in the House of Commons, and thus, uh, she would have more power when negotiating the Brexit deal. So when she announced the UK snap election, there was a nice upward trend. First of all, no one was expecting it. Um, and then it was released, so it changed the trend, it went up. Uh, but then as you guys know, every, or maybe not know, but everyone expected her to win by a landslide. So that's why it increased the trend. What happened? She actually lost. Again, the market didn't expect this, and thus there was a major change in the trend. It went downwards. Um, if the market had expected her to lose, then obviously the trend would have been going down from before the fact that she lost. Um, and thus, the fact after the fact that she would lose, or after the fact that she lost, um, that wouldn't have drastically affected the, the trend, because the trend had already taken the fact uh, into consideration that she was going to lose. Um, so that, that's just a little practical example that I could give you. But pretty much look out for central banks uh, being vocal about certain matters um, or other important events like we said, Brexit, Trump, North Korea, all this information is, is readily available. Uh, and this will give you a certain level of predictability in terms of trend. Okay. Um, find a summary of that event, 
So say, for example, the European Central Bank is issuing a release on, on their monetary policy. Find a summary of that event, understand the sentiment they, that the event brings on, um, and understand what has happened until now and how it will affect in the future. Does it seem like a good thing for the economy or a bad thing? And has it been taken into account already or not? Okay. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's another important topic. Okay, um, and there's a lot of information on on certain events and stuff like that. You can actually find it on our website. Just go to research, and you'll see economic calendar and economic data points, um, and it gives you a list of literally all the releases for the current week. Okay, so what I actually do is I just go onto the site, I filter central banks, so I only want to see central bank releases because for me they are the most important, obviously as well as macroeconomic events like Brexit. Um, but s small data points, they don't really affect me um, and I'll go into that as well. Um, so yeah, I literally just search for the central banks and wait for the release, find the summary and s take it from there. Um, so yeah, once the release has happened, I'll just go to the new site, summarize the article, and um, I, like I said, I'll take it from there, okay? Economic indicators, okay? They paint a picture of how the economy is doing at the moment uh, based on historical performance and on future goals. Um, they cycle in terms of importance. This is this is quite important, and I and I like to use this because it's just a confirmation of the central bank signal. Um, but pretty much, <clears throat> if a central bank is concerned about the economy and growth, and the economy is not doing well, central bank will want to cut rates in order to spark the economy back up again, like we discussed earlier. Therefore, GDP will be important as will other, you know, growth data points and indicators. But now, if the Fed is hiking rates and wants to see sustained improvements in the labor market, then unemployment data and data regarding the labor market are the points that I focus on. So I would, you know, I would ignore the monetary policy aspects or, or data points, data points talking about money supply, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so, so if in that case, we forget about um, we forget about that, and we focus on the new data points. Um, then, for example, unemployment data and data regarding the labour market are the points that we focus on. So, data points and the importance cycle around based on focus. Um, so, we wouldn't really focus on GDP anymore and on growth. Uh, we'd rather focus on job data, unemployment, NFP, et cetera, et cetera. So just to summarize, if the central bank is concerned about growth um, and, you know, the, the health of the economy, then we would focus on GDP. But then, for example, say the, the central bank is, you know, focused on you know, employment data, then GDP will be dropped in terms of importance and I would look more into the jobs data um, and and see the economic data points that affect that. Okay? The three biggest data points are employment, growth and inflation. Okay? Now, if the Fed is in a hike cycle, for example, so they're increasing interest rates or expected to increase them soon, and everything is pointing towards that hike, and then the following week there's a big data point announcement um, on GDP, and it's, it's expected to come out stronger than previously. Um, then the indicator lines up with the fundamental picture, so we can expect the US dollar to rally into that data. If the indicator is opposite to the expected, you can maybe possibly, obviously, by doing some more digging, trade out of that data and not into it. So go against it. Um, so yeah, that's that's also something that, that could prove useful. Um, but yeah, for me, 
That, that, that's why I think central banks are so important and they play a major role for me in the in fundamental analysis. Um, if we think about monetary policy being one of the most important aspects as to, you know, why is something happening and what can we expect. Um, to give you an idea, in 2013, Japan started a quantitative easing program, which means that they are dovish, so they, you know, it's negative for the currency. They're not hiking interest rates, they're dropping them. And um, which saw the, J the, the Japanese yen literally sell off. And at that point, at that same point, the US dollar was going the other way with the Fed uh, hiking rates um, in a rates hiking cycle for the last couple of years. Uh, so between 2013 and currently, uh, we have seen the US dollar JPY go up because the market asked what next and the answer has been hikes from the Fed and QE from the Central Bank of Japan. Uh, therefore, the currencies, because the currencies are going in opposite directions and their policies are in opposite directions, the pair will move strongly in a certain direction. In this case, in an upward direction. US dollar was going up, JPY was going down, therefore the pair US dollar JPY was strongly going up. Okay. So one can see monetary policy influences currency pairs. And when, a, when there's a central bank divergence, uh, you know, between the two, the two countries uh, or economies or currencies, uh, if they're doing the opposite thing, like the case that we just mentioned, that's when you get a nice long-term trend uh, in the currency. Okay. Um, just one thing to remember, when the market generates fresh expectations or receives new info, um, that's when currency moves happen. Um, so, so just look out for, for some turning points. All the news is less powerful, obviously. Um, and what I actually like to do is I'm not just pure fundamentals. I'll use fundamentals as my base, and then I'll build my technicals on top of that. Um, and I'll look for all, all three, uh, all two, both, both. Okay, so all three indicators, for example, and my technicals, I mean, and my fundamentals to line up. Um, and that's when it's a strong signal. If my fundamentals are saying buy and then my indicators are selling, saying sell, probably won't enter the market. Uh, if I do, the, the fundamentals would probably play a bigger role in my decision. Um, but that's obviously just my strategy. Um, so, so yeah, I just pretty much look for a confluence in signals. Uh, but the, some of the most important things to, dis, to you know, keep in mind about fundamental analysis is that it's based on expectation and sentiment and um, you don't really want to trade on on the news so as a release is coming out uh, you don't want to trade on that news obviously some people do it's preference but it's, it's it's a general consensus that you don't really trade on the news you wait for the news event to create that spike if it does and then wait for the noise to die down a little bit, and then you go with your trend with based on what on your on your analysis on the sentiment. Um, but you'll notice as so say the central bank is releasing at two o'clock a certain uh, policy that they're looking to implement. You'll see at two o'clock uh, the market will start moving in the direction based on what's going on. Um, and you'll see that it's quite a spike and it can be very volatile and it can go up and down and up and down in a matter of, of minutes uh, with drastic changes. Um, so that at that point the market becomes extremely volatile. Um, so what is ideal maybe for some people, uh, not everyone would agree, but I'm sure most people, most analysts would agree with me, uh, but obviously you do get strategies that trade on the news. But what I generally like to do and what most people like to do is just wait a couple of maybe like 15, 20, 30 minutes to an hour after, you know, the noise, after the major spike um, and then place the trade on based on the sentiment behind that event. Um, and, and, and that's pretty much it. That, that's how I approach my fundamentals. Um, I hope it helped. And uh, if you guys have any questions, like I said, my email is here. Um, 
sorry over here and um, yeah if you guys have anything just let me know until next time